Nice graphic! Good thing to get my hands on that game. You mean you haven't played it yet? Hi everybody, uh, my name is James Renovich from the Austin Chronicle. I'm here with my friends from the Daily Dot for Fantastic Arcade here in Austin, Texas with all of these strange arcade creations. And we're going to be talking to some of the creators of those games today and I uh, hope you enjoy it. Talk to me a little bit about... Um, alien. I'm never going to say the name. Alien. Every time I look at it, I want to say it's Alien. like Alien. So now how did the, you know, because of the control, when I played it first on my computer, it was just, you know, four keys. Mm -hmm. uh, but here, sort of famously, you have a pretty much either a big moss mound, pretty yeah. much is what you have as a controller. How did mm -hmm. that happen? You know, the game, it's not really game gamified. It's like mm -hmm. kind of like all about nature. So it's just really cool that like you have to go through nature in order to like get through to like the inputs to in order to like operate the game in this very like unnatural way. I guess mm -hmm. it's kind of finicky and it's difficult to play and it's just right. like you know. There's nothing precise about it. Like right, there's no yeah. precision in a you don't bunch even know of where moss. They are. Yeah, yeah you're, you're kind of like, hunting through it and yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so talk to me about your. I mean, your art style seems is very unique to you. So everything I do, I kind of like trace like Metatron's cube, okay. which is like this shape in sacred geometry. So I tend to use that shape to make my assets. Okay. Just so that it, for like first of all, so that it's symmetrical, but like it's also. Um, like not perfectly symmetrical. And it will be out, I promise, it will be out on Itch.io mm -hmm. by the time this gets onto the YouTubes. Yeah, uh, after the bundle. Okay. After the bundle ends, mm -hmm. yes. The bundle that you guys missed, I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. Sorry, guys. I am here with one George Royer. He is the creator of a game called Psychic Cat, which, uh, is amazing but really i just brought him in here to have him read this tweet that yep. he tweeted describing his game okay it's like a cat got dumbo drunk inside a neon sign factory while vangelis played next door yes cat release authorized astral projection authorized are you working on anything else mm, yes can you tell me uh -huh. about it that's cool no pressure. So he can't tell us about it, so we're going to stop talking to George Royer now. Yes. Jerk. So Nog is kind of like, it's a game about these giant monster heads, um, and each one is sort of this puzzle box that you flip around and there's like a whole world inside with like levers that you can pull or buttons or just like things you can interact with. You know, kind of inspired by uh, old toys like Mighty Max or Polly Pocket, if you're familiar with those. Yeah, I was gonna say that it reminded me of toys of my youth and just like, a lot of times it would remind me of sort of baby toys. You know, right. You have those little levers, but obviously it's more complex in their relationships. You know, what were your sort of touchstones for creating that kind of it comes from toys in general. Mm -hmm. So um, the art director and designer on the game is just like really fascinated by cool, colorful, nice toys. So the whole game is kind of about taking that feeling of actual physical objects that you can play with right. and putting it into like a virtual format. So how did you guys get hooked up with uh, Double Fun? At some point, somehow, Tim actually just like signed up to our mailing list and it was super obvious too because it was like Tim at doublefine.com and we're just like wait what? I know a Tim <laughs> at doublefine. Yeah, is this exactly. Tim at doublefine? Um, somehow we got into contact and then started like talking about the possibility of them doing a Double Fine Presents like publishing deal or whatever and that's just kind of happened. PlayStation. Yeah, so it's slated. Uh, should I be saying? Oh, sorry. It's slated to be a Morpheus uh, launch. Title. Oh, okay. When you know when the Morpheus is coming out, you have a vague idea of when you know Nog is going to wow. come out. Way to. Or it's not even called Morpheus anymore, right? Oh no, it's the PlayStation VR now. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. That was. I think they just switched that just a week ago. We're gonna want to cut this whole thing. <laughs> it just sounds like a legal nightmare. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> The game's called Wheels of Aurelia. It's a narrative road trip game, and the idea is that uh, you're playing through a story that is a road trip story. It's an arcade game in the sense that you're supposed to play more than once. Right. 
And it looks like an arcade game, it feels like an arcade game, but yeah. it's actually a narrative game. So it's both both a narrative game and an arcade game. Apart from the like beautiful views, the like pretty bitchin' cars that you get to choose <laughs> from in the game, why did you set the game there and then in the late seventies of Italy? On one side, it was a, like a great opportunity for us to um, research what was happening in our country uh, a generation before us. Mm -hmm. So we kind of like we lived our lives, and we had these. Um, I, I don't want to say shadow, but like there was like this constant feeling, this constant sensation of this world that just uh, stopped being. Mm -hmm. You know, that like evolved into whatever we were living in our lives. They were very, very blessed lives, and, and so we kind of wanted to go back to there and like research what happened and how the like the political landscape became what it became later in the late 80s and in the 90s part of the reason we did that was to research it ourselves and part of the reason was just to make more people interested and so like, like the, the hope is that people would play the game be intrigued about some of the references that we have in the game and some of the things we talk about and then just maybe you know start watching movies that talk about that or mm -hmm. read a book or like do some of their own um, research about the topic Strawberry Cubes is like a side view game, somewhat like a platformer, although you can't jump. Um, and you navigate this world, which is fractured into a number of different screens, each of which is like a little vignette with its own little feel. I found myself drawing a lot from my experiences with my grandmother toward the end of her life. Um, sort of feelings of, of losing her, losing who she was. She had a, a type of dementia and was gradually less and less recognizably herself. Okay. Um, so there's a lot in there about like who she was as I knew her and what it was like seeing that gradually made less and less recognizable. Mm -hmm. And do you find, I mean, with such a personal game, do you, do you feel as you see people play, like if people aren't quite getting that, does that, mm -hmm. does that feel in any way like a personal sort of affront um, or something? No, not really. I mean, so I, you can set out to make it all completely explicit if you want, right? Like, mm -hmm. here's what the story is. Here's what you should feel at 39 seconds. Here's what you right. should feel at an hour and a half. Um, or I think you can set out to evoke things a little more indirectly. So now people can get Strawberry Cubes and a bunch of other yeah, games. Yeah, so uh, as of this morning, the Mac version of Strawberry Cubes is out. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, uh, finally got that together. I apologize for that being so far behind schedule. I grew up on a Mac, That's and I right. know what the dearth of games is like. Froggy, parentheses, it's hungry, is described in the <laughs> Fantastic Arcade booklet as no holds, no holds barred, barred frog game. Yes. <laughs> now, aside from the presence of frogs, is there any other defining characteristic of a frog game? Um, I describe Froggy as the Citizen Kane of frog games. What makes it a very good frog game is the deep backstory of the world blown up by humans and right. All nature cleared by nuclear warheads so they can make room for highways and uh, now frogs must survive on these highways and eat butterflies. It seems like the gameplay is just kind of like a red herring to kind of pull players mm -hmm. into this sort of Surreal weird and sometimes situation. frustrating yes. little world <laughs> that you've created. What are your tools to like pull people in? Typically, it starts like a joke, and I like the idea of a lot of asking people to do ridiculous things of, okay, the game wants me to do this, I'm doing that, okay, I have no idea what I'm doing, right. I'm just going along with it. And, right. Um, I think uh, when I make them too complicated, the joke sometimes gets lost. So, mm -hmm. like, Froggy is really simple, up, down, left, right, right. You, uh, they move when you move, and... Uh, I think that makes it a lot more interesting too so the character comes out and I had other features I wanted to add like I don't know little pu uh, puddles where a frog could go hydrate or something you know <laughs> silly things but hydration is important yeah <laughs> but it was too complicated and I okay. thought it was funnier if the focus really on the frog yum yum that is good oh right. you cars I will I will win <laughs> Hellmouth is a competitive cooking and fighting game. You can go through this death course and the devil will give you an order like make me a salad or make me a dessert. As he, as he does. Yeah, because he's hungry right. and you're kind of like his little like 
bug like personal chefs and you kind of like compete for like to make the best dish because right. you want to be the best chef but also you know for his approval as well so uh, that's, that's what the game is about what uh, beverage do you think pairs best when playing hellmouth what beverage, beverage. uh Blood, I guess. Period blood. But <laughs> I right. don't know. No, uh, spit. Yeah. That's pee, what I've been playing. Diarrhea. Okay. Uh, a mixture. Yeah. Um, foam. Anything. Just, just generally foam, any kind of foam. Ra- ra- rabies. F- rabies foam. <laughs> okay, that's it from the Fantastic Arcade. Yeah, we're here in this mystery cave of a karaoke room here at the highball, and uh, it's time for us to go.